and it's still um, a, a good data set. So in the publication, um, they've got data for Varian and I believe Elector machines, and they have output factors um, down to two by two. And so this would be something that would be really quite easy to, to measure in an afternoon or an evening, um, starting with the two by two um, field size data. And the good thing, this has been published um, and it's um, been validated and based on a lot of, um, a lot of measurements. Just, um, the next paper, this is, I think, from Medical Physics. And again, I think it is publicly available. Um, this was reference photon dissymmetry data for Varian Linux. Sir, They've taken data from 500 varying machines. Uh, they've got a whole range of factors, depth doses, output factors, multi-leaf collimator, um, small factors, off-axis and wedge factors. Um, and so, for example, this is um, the 10 MV and the PDD values at a range of depths. I'm just trying to remember what I've been for 10 by 10. They've got output factors. Now, I will admit these are not small uh, field size factors, but it gives you an indication of what they are collecting. The next, the more recent publication from 2019 was looking at some of the beam modeling parameters for Eclipse, Pinnacle, and Ray Station. Now, I must admit, it's not including um, any of the elector planning system data, but maybe they will, will publish that eventually. Um, this, this is really um, important for small field dosimetry. For those of you who have Eclipse, um, your spot size, your MLC transmission, and your DLG. And again, they have taken data from all their centers um, for the AAA and with Acuros and plotted those. And again, they have tables of data of average values for these particular parameters. Because these have a very big impact on your small field modeling, if you're using Eclipse, um, again, this is a really nice, simple way to audit your own data. Now, it's not saying that your data is wrong, but if, you're, if your data, um, Drawing here. Whoops, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, annotate. I've been using annotate for, for years and still have. So if your data is in this region, um, you're probably modeled your beam pretty well. Again, similarly with your MLC transmission. Preferably um, somewhere in the middle. If you're getting values, sort of uh, outliers, pasty, or if you're giving dosimetric leaf gap values down here, again, it may not mean that your beam is completely wrong, but may have been not optimized in the best possible way. So, again, this is a great way to develop. just check your data, check for consistency. With, with other centers. Um, let me clear all that. You don't want to see all of the um, uh, clear. And I'm sure many of you um, would have seen this. Um, it's quite an odd report now um, for TG119. Um, look at IMRT commissioning, got the different shapes. Again, this is something, um, if you've not done that, you could quite easily do that. Um, uh, for your planning system. And so the proposal was, and, and I have to admit also discussing with Shaban a little bit as well um, since the meeting was, let's try and do this amongst the different centres um, and extend this TG119 testing to VMAT or SRS, which is important for small fields. Um, and it's a great way to um, 
collaborate. It's a great way. It's a good exercise for your trainee physicists as well. Um, get them to do the do the hard work, prepare it all. Um, yeah, so that's that's just something that we will follow up over the next few months and look to compare across different centres. So have a discussion with Shaban and um, we're happy to discuss and from that maybe we'll get a publication. Um, so, um, Shaban, how many minutes do I have left for my session? Uh, okay. 10, minutes. 10 minutes. Okay, let me be really quick. Let me tell you what um, collaborations uh, can do. Um, again, this came out from the uh, IAEA program, um, the doctoral program. So, this, so one of the supervisors, uh, Daniel Venencia, um, he's a let me just zoom in. He's, he's a physicist from Argentina. He did his PhD through an earlier IAEA-sponsored um, project, and now he's supervising one of uh, the ladies from Peru. Um, and after our first meeting, we thought, well, let's, um, he came to us about this project that they were looking at, and that was to just get the right zoom. Um, a multi center comparison of scatter factors for square and rectangular small fields defined for true beam Linux. Um, so the process was it was very straightforward, and um, we all had to have a true beam, obviously. Um, we compare corrected uh, output factors uh, for square fields. Now, there's a lot of text on here, um, but in a nutshell, in summary, the um, everything was measured with jaw defined fields, um, SSD 100, depth of 10 for just a normal 6 MD X ray beam we could use whichever of the small field detectors that we wanted to um, that we were using in our department um, we did square and rectangular fields and you can see here we had a range of the ptw diodes the ipa razor uh, 3d pinpoints uh, micro diamond as well as um, one of the sun nuclear detectors mp groups mp groups yeah, and again, yeah, you can see um, some of them were measured with multiple detectors. Um, we just had the time for the one uh, one detector. So, what sort of results um, did we get? Let me show you. Let's go to the one by one because that's the most uh, interesting and where we have the largest variation. Um, oops, sorry about that. Uh, let me just zoom down just a little bit more just to get everything in quite nicely. Um, yeah, so here's our total scatter factor um, for the one by one fields uh, with the other jaw um, out to 40 by 40, which is a bit crazy, but you never really treat one by 40. But anyway, that's what we did. Um, so you can see at the one by one field, um, variations from about 0 0.67 to 0 0.695. And the mean was somewhere in uh, about 0 0.68. Um, so there's not a huge variation across there. Given that we are all using different detectors, the true beams, even though they're all beam matched, um, we still have some variation. We'll all have all of our own individual experimental uncertainties in the in the setup. Um, interestingly, our true beam values were all always tended to be on the higher side at the one by one field. Um, part of that 
could be related to our micro diamond. It was one of the earlier models of that. And I, we know that the TRS-398 did have a bit more, um, one of my, the factors were K factors for um, the micro diamond in the TRS-483 were based on a range of models. And so and maybe the, yeah, the response has changed um, slightly. We believe that is the case because um, when we've done some of our work, we've just hit on just some small differences. Um, so that's the one by one. Um, once you go up to the two by two, um, you get a pretty similar result. Um, oops. And then when you get up to starting at three centimeters, um, from about three by three, you can see yeah, the agreement is, is really, really quite good. Um, so here are the, um, the average values for different um, field sizes. Um, I'm saying, I guess, John, the, the percentage bronze for all of those. So it's nothing in the said to us that, we, uh, that any of us were greatly wrong um, because we are treating SRS. Um, so it was actually a really nice, useful exercise um, to be able to um, compare all of that. I'll finish off with um, some work with, with Kausa, who is uh, a colleague of your IAEA visitor. Um, so part of her, one of her exercises in her training was to commission the, there's a, a newer PTW SRS diode and oops, sorry that's the light um, so there's quite a bit of data here um, and so we just tried to compare relative output factors for different detectors on different true beam machines that we had um, different physicists had measured this at different times um, yeah, so it's really about trying to say, okay, well, what what sort of values do we do we get for our different detectors? Mm -hmm. So we have data for the micro diamond. We said data for the pinpoint. I um, mean, the only issue is that at this field size, your K factor is nearly four percent. Um, just delete all that. Let me see if I can see. There was a nice summary of our results. Um, so we have taken that across. Just see if I can find that. Oh, here we go. Um, so that's from Argentina. Let's go back to this one. So I'm just trying to remember where um, we did have a comparison of different um, different detectors. Um, it's a bit um, hard to see, but we've, for this um, for the two by two field with the three D semiflex, we got a value of 0.801. And for the with the new SR, PDW SRS diode, we had a value of 0.789. Um, so there was um, a nice summary put together where we compared um, all the different all the different uh, factors that we had, and also what was published um, some of the other uh, some of the other papers. <laughs> But in the end, we were happy with the I guess we're using the PTW SRS uh, diode, and we now use that for some of our clinical work. Um, I'll just very just to finish, I shall quickly show you um, very quickly some of the papers and a, a methodology um, if you want to use film dosimetry for your small field. Um, so Johnny Morales was one of um, one of my colleagues here. He did his PhD in small field dosimetry, and one of the oh sorry, let me share that 
Oh, sorry. Uh, let's ask them, okay. Um, so he just very just one minute. I'll um, so he was looking at output factors for um, the brain lab cones. Um, happy to share this paper with you. But uh, use extrapolation technique to group the volume averaging uh, with film, did multiple film measurements, and from that work, uh, we uh, use this to validate our, our, um, our cone factors down to four millimeters, for which there is really very limited data for, um, for correction factors. All right. Do you have any person from the voice text? I If not, um, I'd be really happy to um, with um, Shaban, <laughs> the people want to come up with some sort of audit or intercomparison. Um, does take time to do the measurements and collect that information, but uh, it could be a really nice uh, exercise um, in dosimetry and um, as a nice follow on uh, to this particular, to your particular um, seminar this week. I have one question. Yes, Atia. Yes. Uh, you were talking about uh, measurement of uh, uh, output factors that were presented in the form of a poster. Um, and uh, you were showing the difference between the output factors measured for 2B uh, in different centers. Hmm. So my question is, uh, have, uh, have you used some correction factor uh, for output factor measurement? Or it was simply the ratio of doses? Um, yes, yeah, so each, so for the four or five centres in that poster, uh, we all applied um, the factors from TRS 483. Um, and still, the difference is, uh, difference is within 2% or um, what was the range of the difference? Yeah, let's have, the, uh, let me just share that screen very. Um, So here we go. So for the one by one, um, uh, yeah, unfortunately they don't really show uh, um, what uh, sort of standard deviation. Uh, the three, three percent. Again, if you look at that, um, that's way, but yeah. Talked about three percent. I think it was about just over three percent variation. So you, use the same, uh, you use the same ion chamber or uh, detector or right. different. If you're, um, let me just stop the annotation. Um, sorry about that. Let me just clear that. Um, sorry. Clear. Click, 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 click. There we go. To the front. Um, whoops. Sorry. Button. Um, um, so these were the five hospitals, mm -hmm. uh, the different detectors that were used. So we had, so Daniel Center, um, he had four of oh, yeah, the three detectors. Um, two of us just had the micro diamond from Columbia. They had these other similar ones and the pinpoint. And the other center in Argentina had the razor diamond. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in 2019, I studied uh, your paper and I also cited it. Uh, in my oh, publication. Yes, I remember that now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think 
Ati, it would be nice to repeat something similar. Um, it does require commitment by hospitals to do the measurements, but I'm, I remember just we just did our measurements in the little water tank. We only did one beam. Um, Daniel did one sort of triple F beams and uh, 10X, and we were busy at the time, but it was like one, one evening. Um, I did that in like a couple of hours, so I think it would be a really nice exercise and it could establish averages. Anyone of them uh, use the film dosimetry data in any publication? Um, a lot. I mean, a lot of people do use the film for benchmark. Have you had a comparison of any situ hospitals like that? Have you shown for that output factor? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the advantage, and people will know, and in the hospital in Australia, people do. Because uh, Atiyah is very interested in that, you know, So if you collect yeah. two, three hospitals data, it would be a good citation. Yes, exactly. Um, I mean, with Johnny's work, we did nine films for the same field site, so that reduced the, uh, the type A uncertainties and then sort of applying like a, a zero volume technique that allowed us to reduce um, yeah, um, that it's issue. Very, very tedious processing. Yeah. So this using is, film is very, uh, I remember those yeah. tough hours <laughs> that I have been working with the film. Yeah. I remember staying late with Johnny and we were measuring till late at night and analyzing. This is where you take on a, PA, a master's or a PhD student and you get them to do the hard work. <laughs> um, that's one way. Um, I mean, the other way is to maybe just not do it as many field sizes and just do it as a, a check of, say, some of your small, smaller fields. Um, uh, okay, Robin. Um, thank you very much for coming to this lecture and discussion. Uh, great. Any last question for the participants? So we we went to the next activity. Great. Well, uh, Shavan. Yeah. Javan, thank you so much. And uh, Dr. Nori and Atia and everyone else. And um, my new, I guess, the um, colleague of my good friend, Kelsa. Um, and everybody, I, I, you are in our thoughts because we have seen, I guess, the recent uh, issues in the floods in Pakistan. So wishing you and all your families safety and good health. And um, I hope I can come visit one day. Yeah. Have a great day. We and, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Bye.